Hi everyone, how are you? Hope you're good, hope you've had a good week. Um, sorry I missed you last time, I was not very well so I couldn't make any videos, I couldn't do anything, I was just in my bed for ages, it was rubbish. Um, but I'm back now, I'm okay so that's great and um, I hope you've all been getting used to going back to school or nursery or new schools, new nurseries. Um, been a couple of weeks now so which is which is good so hopefully you're all not too tired and you've got used to it again. Right, in our story today, we're going to hear about Paul and Barnabas and how they travel to some different places, telling people about Jesus and what happens to them when they're there. But before we tell our story, I want you to imagine that this tube here, this toilet roll tube, is Jesus. Doesn't look like Jesus, does it? But just pretend, that, just imagine that this is Jesus. And this is Jesus in the world when he was a man and when he was a boy and uh, just a child like you guys. And while he was living his life, things didn't always go so well. There were some people who didn't like him, and so sometimes he had to deal with some tough times. We're gonna pretend these books are like tough times that Jesus had to deal with. And tough times came, but they didn't squash him. Jesus was able to stand, withstand them and cope with them. And then more tough times came, when people really didn't like him and they wanted to kill him. We're ending with the worst thing ever that anybody would ever do to anyone else, which is to take their, you know, to kill them, isn't it? And when we think of the Easter story and they beat Jesus and they whipped him and they put sharp thorns on his head and then eventually they put him on the cross and they killed him. So the biggest thing that could happen happens to Jesus. The worst thing ever, death came. But death didn't even squash Jesus, did it? Because he rose from the dead. And so just remember our story today before we carry on. Jesus is strong enough to deal with anything. And he did. When he lived on this earth as a man, he coped with everything that people threw his way. So just remember that while we, um, and then we'll come back to that in our story later on. Uh, and before we start our story... I'm going to set you a little challenge. Is there anything that you could think of that you're a little bit scared of to do, but you might want to give it a go? So something that's safe, but you're a bit frightened of, like maybe you want to climb a little bit higher on a climbing frame. Maybe there's a slide somewhere near you that you haven't quite managed to get to the top of yet. It's a bit too high, a bit too scared. Maybe you want to give that a go. Or maybe it's time to take the stabilizers off your bike and with your parents or carer, learn how to ride your bike without any stabilizers on. Why am I saying this? Well, in our story today, Barnabas and Paul had to do things that made that they were a bit scared of. They had to be brave. When you hear what happens to them, you'll think, oh, I see more of that's why you said that. They had to do things that were a bit scary and that they might not have been comfortable with, but they did it anyway because they wanted to do the right thing for God and to tell other people about Jesus. Okay, so our story today, um, I'm going to show you this map. In the last few stories, in Acts chapter 13, we heard about Paul and Barnabas starting out here, this place called Antioch in Syria, and they travelled all the way to Cyprus, and they went to these places here, and then they went all the way back up to this place, these places here, and they ended up in Antioch. And then today, we start the story, they travelled across to this place called Iconium, and that's where our story starts today. So they're doing some more journeys, and you can see my green pen's gone. That's because they did some more journeys, and we're going to hear about them now. So they start off in Iconium, and they do what they always did. They were telling people the good news about Jesus. And there were some people there who liked to hear that, and started to believe and follow Jesus too. And then there was other people who didn't want to hear it. And they did not like Paul and Barnabas for telling people about Jesus. And so they hatched a plan to try to kill them again. But this time... They heard about, Paul heard about the plan and Barnabas and thankfully they managed to escape and they escaped to this place called da, 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 Lystra. So they went to this place called Lystra, which you can see is here, mm, maybe you can't, but if you print off this map, I've sent this on the thing, you can print one off and you can have a look at it yourself and draw the little lines of their journey. So they went to Lystra and when they got there, guess what they did? They told people about Jesus again. And while they were telling people about Jesus, there was someone who was a man who was crippled. He was lame. He couldn't walk um, right from when he was born. His legs just didn't work. And he heard Paul t telling everyone about Jesus. And Paul looked at him and he could see 
that this man believed in Jesus and believed that God could heal him. And so he said to the man, stand up. And the man stood up and he was healed. And it was absolutely amazing. But the crazy thing that happened was everyone else around who'd seen this happen thought that Barnabas and Paul must be gods if they can do that. So they started to get all these plans together to have like a big party and a big celebration and get animals and try and sacrifice animals to them to say, oh man, you, you're, you, you guys, you must be like, you must be gods. And we're so, we're so like happy that you're here in our town. Um, and when Paul and Barnabas realised this, they were like, no, we're not gods. What are you on about? There's only one God. There's only one God in the whole wide world. And he made the whole wide world. He created everything. You don't need to have all of these gods for different things. You're doing it wrong. There's just one God and he's and he created everything. But some of them didn't listen and they still tried to call them gods. And they were like, oh they must have been thinking, oh man, some people, we're never gonna we're never gonna get through to them. Um but then what happened was there were still some Jewish people who didn't like what Paul and Barnabas were up to and they travelled from these places to come and see them and they persuaded they tried to persuade people not to listen to Paul and Barnabas and tell and told, tried to tell them that Jesus was not God and God wasn't the only true God and all of that kind of stuff and uh, they persuaded the people there to try to kill Paul by throwing stones at him not very nice at all so they threw stones at Paul and they thought he was dead and so they dragged him out his body out of the city and they left him there to die but thankfully when the other disciples had heard about this and they got to Paul and they, they stood around Paul, Paul just stood up and he was like, oh, I'm not dead. It's okay, don't worry about it, I'm okay. But this time they went to this place called Derby. So they didn't want to didn't hang around there too long and they went to Derby. Guess what they did in Derby? They told people about Jesus. So they told people... To, people they told people about Jesus in Derby and some listened and some became Christians and some didn't and then um, after that they decided we need to go back to Lystra to the place where they tried to kill us and we need to make sure that the church there that the people there who, who are followers of Jesus are encouraged and they know that I'm okay and that they can carry on following Jesus so they went back to Lystra and they told people there must have been, this is the bit where I'm saying they had to be brave, because they're going back to the place where the people did not like them, where there was people there who tried to kill them. But they told everybody, all the Christians there, they're like, you can still have faith in God, you need to trust God, he knows what he's doing, he's always with you, he will look after you, he, he will um, make sure that people know about him, so don't worry about that. And for your church, you need some leaders, so they prayed about who were going to be the leaders, and they made sure that these people, these churches in, in um, Lystra and Iconium and Antioch here, this Antioch, they made sure that they had leaders in their church. And then they went all the way back down here to this place called Perga. Guess what they did? Told people about Jesus. They went to Attilia, told people about Jesus, and then they went back to where they started in Antioch in Syria all the while telling people about Jesus. Now, do you remember at the beginning I was like, this is Jesus. And Jesus was strong enough to cope with everything that the world threw at him. All the, the bad things that people tried to do, the nasty stuff they said about him, even killing him, Jesus could cope with it and overcome it and be strong enough to defeat it. That's Jesus. Oh, I've left my... Wait there. That's Jesus, but this is a little bit like what we're like. And actually, do you know what? When we're on our own and the world throws things at us and people do nasty things to us and they say horrible stuff about us that isn't true or they treat us not very fairly, we don't cope with it very well, do we? We can't withstand. We can't withstand it on our own, but... When we've got Jesus inside us, when we've got the Holy Spirit, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus is inside, suddenly it's a different story. We can cope with... Oh, wait a minute. I didn't make that properly, did I? I thought I'd cut it perfectly, but I clearly haven't. Try again. We can cope with 
Jesus is inside us. We can cope with all the things that the world tries to throw at us. Like Paul and Barnabas did. They had to cope with it. But because they had Jesus and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they could cope with it and they could carry on and they could do God's work wherever they went. And that's what we need to remember. We can have extra super courage and be brave when we've got Jesus inside us. When we ask him to fill us with his spirit, that's when we can do things that we're not comfortable with normally and be a bit braver than we normally are. So there you go, guys. Next time you feel a little bit afraid, pray. Ask God to fill you with his spirit. And you'll be right. So, some crafts that I've thought of you thought for you guys to do today. I've sent some uh, colouring sheets and some... There's a maze puzzle. Um, and there's a, there's a word one as well that you have to work out the words for and um, the code. And then you can fill that in. And also there's a couple of things like this. These, discuss, these thought bubbles. So for this one, when they went to um, Lystra, Lystra, Lystra they told people that there's only one, that God created the world. They don't need loads of gods. There's just one and he created everything. So maybe you could use this and think of all of the things that God made. You could write them all on, the, on there, fill the bubbles with that. And there's another one to think about all the ways to tell other people about Jesus. Or the other idea I had was thinking about nature. What do you love in nature? Do you love trees? Do you love the grass? so we can play? Do you love the sky? Do you love the sea? Do you love dogs? What do you love? Maybe you can make something, a piece of artwork or a picture or a painting of something that you love about nature that God made and see and then you can show it on Sunday or on Beyond Sunday, take a photo of it. That would be brilliant. Um, and just before we go, we're going to have a prayer. So are you ready? Okay, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for the rain that we have. Thank you for everything that you've created in this world. And thank you that we know that you are the one true God and we can follow you. Thank you that when we do follow you, we can ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit to make us as brave and as courageous as Paul and Barnabas. And that actually we can do anything because you give us the strength to do it. Thank you that we can tell people about you. And even if they're going to be horrible about it, you give us the strength to be able to deal with that. And Lord, we just ask that you would strengthen these boys and girls and that whatever it is that they've got that they might be frightened of, that you would give them the courage to be able to keep going and, and keep going through it, even if they're frightened. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. See you next week. <laughs>